Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Simmerman. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's always wonderful to have you along for the ride. In this video, I'm gonna give a special project profile of the Quorum Drive pop-up bike lane, which features a very creative, a protected roundabout. Uh, this is in Addison, Texas, and is really truly inspiring to see this very first attempt at doing any kind of protected and separated bike lane in this small town. So without further ado, let's get right to it and check out the Addison pop-up bike lane. Hi, my name is Brendan Yarbrough. I'm with Kimley Horn. I'm one of the consultants helping the NCT COG and the town with the temporary bike uh, lanes to get feedback from the public and hopefully make these permanent in the future. Fantastic, all right, let's go check it out. Sounds good. All right. So I noticed we have some uh, flashing uh, pedestrian crossing beacons here? Yes. You know, this is a very pedestrian friendly area and so the town installed those a few years ago just to help with the crossings here. Okay. Um, you know, traffic it does has historically gone pretty quickly through here um, and so they're just trying to add as much pedestrian friendly elements right. in the neighborhood. Right. Now I notice we're uh, Approaching something very special. Why yeah, don't you describe so this and then you know what what we'll do we'll just uh, we'll go over it and then talk uh, pull over and stop and talk about it. Yeah, absolutely That's pretty cool. Yeah, so um, as part of this project dart has the dart um, our bus system here in DFW has a few bus stops along this route that we're planning and the goal of this is to test out two different types of facilities. So on this side, we have a floating bus stop. Mm -hmm. It's a 40 foot platform for pedestrians to accommodate both their doors. Um, and then we have a bike ramp on the back side um, where the bikes cross. It limits the you know, overlap between the, the bikes and peds as well. And so it creates a, a nice crossing and um, allows the riders to use the platform. And then on the other side, uh, directly opposite, we have a shared bus bike. And this is to get feedback from the public and also from dart on what facilities their drivers like more mm -hmm. um, than others and also from the public on what they felt more safe and comfortable with. Well, I think we kind of predict who, yeah. what, which feels more Abs comfortable for people uh, absolutely, uh, cycling yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, def definitely. Yeah. Um, but just want to, you know, get the feedback yeah. and, and hear from the public and that's what we're here for. Yeah, fantastic. That's great. And uh, we did see earlier quite a few buses rolling through this area. Yeah. We do have a transit station just about a block or so down the, the way there. Uh, how many of those buses? Well, I guess the answer is right here. Uh, we've got, th it looks like three buses. Three. This is a bus stop. Yeah. How frequent is the stop at this location? So it's not frequent, um, though we did get some ridership data from DART mm -hmm. um, prior to this. And on average, they probably have about eight to 10, 15 people a day. So it's it's a pretty low ridership okay. through here. Okay. Um, and that's just average across, um, right. you know, the entire um, six months because they take data in six months and sure. do averages. So it is it is a low ridership area. Yeah. Um, well, this is a really nice feature to be able to certainly make it a lot safer and a lot more pleasant for even the people who are uh, boarding and alighting from the bus, mm -hmm. uh, while at the same time, given the fact that the bus doesn't stop here that frequently, mm -hmm. you can tell you that you can get away with, you know, having the bus stopping and actually holding up traffic yeah. for a, a, a few seconds because yeah. Since it's not that frequent, it's not going to inconvenience that many drivers. Exactly. And yeah. I mean, another thing too is, I mean, you know, with the bus stopping in the travel lane, that also acts as, you know, traffic calming, which will right. slow vehicles in this area. Like I said earlier, this is a very pedestrian friendly area. And, yeah. you know, we're trying to enhance that experience through here. And I think that'll be a good, good feature. Fantastic. All right, let's go look at the rest let's, of it. Let's go. I like the uh, the use of the little uh, pop up uh, protection here with the planters. Yeah, that was um, that was something the town definitely wanted to add in here, and um, you know, it's also an aesthetics thing they want mm -hmm. through here. And um, these blue blocks that they have shown, these are what these are the uh, they use these for like with children. It's like these imagination playground blocks where kids can come and build shapes and stuff. And the town's like, we have those, and I was like, that seems like a really cool idea. You know, just again, it's aesthetics. It's not, you know, it's not protection like, right. you know, bollards or right. you know, yeah. curb or anything but like that. But it really that. helps the public imagine, oh, this is what you mean by protected bike lane. Absolutely. Separated yeah. bike lane. Yeah. 
Yeah, and when we when we go back down the south route, um, another thing that you know we don't see here a lot in DFW are green bike lanes, uh, right. green uh, conflict markings at intersections. Yeah, and so uh, you know that's another feature that uh, the town definitely wanted to have as part of this temporary install. Yeah, was the green conflict marking as at you know major intersections and driveways, which um, you know again is to get feedback because we don't have that a lot in DFW and right. You know, a lot of towns and cities consider maintenance, and when you don't have a lot of one product, it kind of it makes it hard to maintain it. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited that they were willing to do this. Fantastic. You know, Addison's willing to kind of become that, um, you know, precedent for other bike lanes around the DFW area, and I, I appreciate that they're willing to do that. Yeah. The demonstration will be around for three weeks. Okay. Um, you know, across three weekends to get as much feedback from the public. We have QR codes around the area um, just to try and get feedback on like how safe and how comfortable you felt through the bike lanes. Um, and then after that, they'll, we'll take it down and the town is gonna work to make these permanent. They're mm -hmm. gonna go after funding and try to make these permanent um, and get them installed. Is the intention to have this be like the the future design if they were to move forward or would there be an opportunity to maybe shift that car parking and making you know parking parking protected bike lane so that's one thing the town is looking into mm -hmm. um, and so assuming that they can get funding from um, you know various agencies they are willing to to push that the curb out put the parking um, and put the bike lanes behind the, the parked cars which is definitely a much safer facility for people yeah um, and so, um, yeah, that's something definitely the town is looking into, you know, obviously pending funding because that's a, that's a much heavier lift than sure, taking sure. away a travel lane. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and what's nice about it too is that you could still preserve some, you know, you could still technically preserve that uh, parking in that area and then yeah. transform that into part of the protection. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. That's, that's kind of the goal of um, what the town wants and, their, you know, their city manager has been you know, backing that from the start. And yeah. so it's good to have advocates um, at, the, at the town that are willing to do that. Yeah, let's roll up onto the sidewalk here. Yeah. Uh, head over to the uh, transit station sign. Uh, the reason I wanted to take us all the way down here is to kind of give the context to the number of buses that we are seeing along that stretch. It's yeah. because this is a major transit center. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we also have the future Silver Line yeah. uh, coming to this area. Yeah, and so that was kind of the premise of this whole project itself is uh, connection to and from DART facilities. Um, it's that last mile connection. Um, and so the Silver Line is a new project that DART's working on right now. It's, um, it crosses all the way from Plano all the way to the DFW airport, which is a, a great stretch because DART currently doesn't really run east-west ah, okay. in DFW, so it'll be good east-west connection. Um, and they are installing a new Silver Line station here at in Addison, uh, on, on top of having a pretty large transit hub here, so yeah. Okay, so as we approach from this uh, side, we can see that we've got our uh, lane closure markings, uh, letting the motorists know that, uh, by the way, the right lane is closed. And yeah, absolutely. Give and us so an opportunity to test this. Yeah, and so that's the thing, right? The circle today is a two lane roundabout, which, you know, is not a very common type of roundabout. Yeah. And so, uh, and so it, it is confusing for drivers. And so we've actually heard a lot of positive feedback already. Right. You know, that taking it down to one lane is a lot more intuitive, yeah. um, which does also allow us to provide room for, you know, a bike lane through here. Yeah. And you know this is temporary, and there, the town rented waterfield barriers to provide as much protection. We again have the green conflict markings with signage and arrows, are and yield markings. So trying to make it as trying to make it as protective as possible for bicyclists, so they feel comfortable through here. Right. And we'll use the pedestrian crossing here, so we can do a full. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Kind of make our way across. But yeah, we're really excited about this pilot mm -hmm. and, and it is a, it's a short one, but yeah. we're just excited that the town is, is moving forward with the bike infrastructure and trying to become, you know, like I said, a precedent for yeah. the rest of DFW. Can you think of another 
protected roundabout uh, in the DFW area? That is a good question. So none that come to the top of my head. There is, you know, in the traditional sense for bike lanes at roundabouts, it does tend to go off street before it enters the roundabout and then it'll stay off street and where it's more in line with a pedestrian. Right. Um, you know, the crossings are farther back. Sure. And so this design itself, you know, came from, you know, an older roundabout design that was in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, with this being a temporary install, this is what we had to work with. And so uh, like the waterfield barriers were a big deal. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. That is great. We'll pull over here and just uh, kind of chat a little bit more about the installation. Uh, thank you very much for that, that yeah. quick little uh, uh, quick tour of the facility. Uh, Amanda, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Amanda Popkin McCullough with Popkin Pop-Ups, and we did the installation here. We did, yeah. the, we did the pop up. You did the pop up part of the, the installation, <laughs> yeah. And we see right behind you here uh, something that looks very familiar with you because I've been around your pop ups before. Uh, yeah, so uh, talk a little bit about the pop up and what's going to be happening. Uh, we're just out here talking with the community today. We've got a survey up for the three weeks of the installation, and we want to hear from residents, from car drivers, from CWD, uh, trash pickup, the, the DART train uh, uh, buses, yeah. um, Dallas Area Rapid Transit, and just really get insight on this design and whether it's a good fit, um, primarily because I think um, Brendan probably mentioned that we're looking at doing a, a, a safer, more permanent installation than this, we're really evaluating with this pop-up what the cars are experiencing sure. and whether necking things down to just one lane only creates any problems mm -hmm. or um, whether it's a ne negligible impact, which is kind of our experience so far. Though, while we were out here, yeah. we noticed that rush hour was very thin line of cars every once in a while. Yeah. Um, I did just hear from a resident who said it was oddly um, low traffic for rush hour the last couple <laughs> days. So I think it's, uh, we've decided it's fair day. The kids were off school. Uh, okay. People were yeah. probably all at the state fair. So. Well, and that's why you do that. It's a really good yeah. point. This yeah. is the reason why we do these things for three weeks, yeah. you know, yeah. three weekends in a row, so that you can gauge a little bit more, uh, yeah. you know, valuable feedback. So that if you know one weekend happens to be, you know, just happens to be like, oh, I don't know, a Texas Oklahoma game right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it can it, you know impact that. You yeah. know, from a engineering perspective, what What's sort of the, the most valuable information that you would like to, you know, hopefully glean from uh, Amanda's pop-up here? So for me, it's it's the traffic calming aspect of mm -hmm. it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want to. I also want to understand the safety that bicyclists, pedestrians, mm -hmm. cars are all feeling as they drive through. But mm -hmm. honestly, it's the traffic calming. And so, luckily, the town has a uh, speed feedback sign that's along this that okay. actually records data and so the goal is to ah, fabulous so you are in real time catching some of that yeah. speed data so that you can uh, you know hopefully obviously compare that, that you know to previous reducing speeds down right. to closer to the 30 miles an hour because yeah you know what we've what we've noticed you know when we first started doing the pilot mm -hmm. is that cars do fly up and down this this roadway sure. and so hopefully by narrowing, you know, and adding a bike facility where people feel a little bit more cramped, they're going to slow mm -hmm. down and, and, you know, give, you know, right away to other yeah. modes of travel. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I would add, like, I think the really interesting push and pull there is that when we were putting down this initial tape line on the outside edge, we had cones that really narrowed that ten and a half foot lane down to ten mm -hmm. and that's when people really started to slow down to about the speed right. about yeah. you know a really a more manageable 20 miles an hour for right. this type of an environment like that that I would expect um, and every single neighbor we've talked to is like the cars go too fast everyone's speeding it in especially the buses which is fascinating because they're the ones that are pushing for the bigger lane. Sure. And I feel like I can say this because I'm not the engineer that has to like make these decisions, but like from my perspective, like necking this lane down from 11 feet 
to 10, they can still fit. They just have to drive slow right. and make sure they don't hit anything, which keeps them from speeding. Because, you know, even if those buses are going 30 miles an hour, they are so big and noisy and heavy that it's it's a really scary situation for them to, you know, whiz by you at the speed limit. Like, right. they, they really need to be going much slower for it to feel like a safer environment. So I think that's... Um, in my mind, that's the most interesting thing about this. Once we moved those cones back mm -hmm. after the installation had been in for, you know, a day, a couple hours, like people kind of got back to their normal like speed, sure. which was a little unnerving because we were also still just like a foot from them still right. working yeah, in yeah, the yeah. bike lane yeah. and people were going 30 and 35 whizzing by us still. So it seems like there really does need to be a concerted effort to to slow things down and the only thing that's going to do that is narrower lanes is right. creating an environment where people have to drive slow so that they don't hit things yeah <laughs> and the city might have to even just you know put up a 20 mile an hour speed limit to let people know we don't want you to go 30 anymore <laughs> yeah i mean you come to think of it yeah th this particular design the fact that we've got this roundabout right here we've got an outdoor cafe right over there we have another outdoor cafe right over here I mean, ultimately, to your point, you know, with the, the, the noisiness of the, the bigger vehicles, the buses, and some of the other bigger trucks and SUVs that we have these days, uh, we'd like to see them traveling at a much slower speed so that we can really, you know, sort of calm this environment and make it more people-oriented, which is good for business, good yeah. for these local cafes exactly. not to have speeding traffic. Yeah. And you mentioned the residents, the local re We see housing. Is This is a housing-rich area yeah. right here. Uh, I, this has got to be part of that TOD concept yeah. because the transit center is right, right over there. So you get the sense that, yeah, a little bit of behavior change and really reinforcing through design of having you know, protected bike facilities could hopefully slow things down and make it a little bit more intuitive for drivers to, oh yeah, we don't need to, to rush through this space. And that'll be you know good for the residents and good for the businesses as well. Yeah, man, and also like faster cars are noisier cars too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, slow things down and it gets quieter and we're, you know, more residential and peaceful. I had a couple of uh, residents tell me the other day, like they moved from other cities, other towns, other states, and they really, gravitated here because of this urban feel that it's right. really rare to have something especially with these big trees like Addison was really forward thinking when they put this mm -hmm. whole development in in the 90s mm -hmm. and it's really matured over time there's really nothing else like this in DFW mm -hmm. it's so unique to also be connected to the train station right. because they put the infrastructure in for that future rail connection 40 years ago right. you know and, and, and oftentimes I know in, in DFW got this push-pull that the rail isn't exactly where we need it to be. It's not always near the destinations. I've, I've heard that critique from Jeff Speck in particular in mm -hmm. his walkable city, but um, but it, you know it's difficult to get that time frame right. right. And Addison managed to you know do things in an order that they've got this amazing environment right next to the the rail transit, and and now they're going to have a new trail there. And, yeah. Um, it's just really amazing synergy that's, that's really hard to find. So the fact that Addison is already looking to up their game, improve this even more is, you know, just speaks to the really cool city that, it, that you know, the, the staff and everyone, it, it, this is a cool town. It's really yeah. unique. Yeah. Fantastic. Final word from the engineer. Enjoy the bike lanes and give us as much feedback as possible, please. Fantastic. <laughs> and final word from our pop-up. Let me know if you need any more pop-ups. We had so much fun doing this. I brought in all of my friends and co-workers that I work on um, other, you know, build-out projects with and uh, markets and fun stuff like that. And we just had such a blast. Everyone just, like, really enjoyed the hard work. It was a much bigger project than we thought. But, yeah. man, it's, it's beautiful. Enjoy it. I'm Jana Tidwell. I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation for the town of Addison, Texas. Um, and we are working on piloting on-street bike lanes um, to test them and get feedback from our cyclists and from our residents so we can fine-tune and develop some final plans to construct bike lanes. 
in town. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about Addison. How big is Addison? How many, what's the population size? Here? Yeah, so Addison's really interesting because we have a nighttime population of residents that's about 14,000 people. Okay. And then in the daytime, we flex up to about 125,000 people. Oh my gosh, so you're a big employer here. Yeah. Yes, we, um, we're four square miles, uh -huh. but we say that we're small but mighty. <laughs> because of our ability to bring in all the additional people um, that are really an important part of our community on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, and what I'm noticing too about this particular installation, the pop-up uh, protected bike installation, is it helps deliver people from the transit station right into, into this area, which I know, especially when the, I guess it's the Silver Line, when yes. the Silver Line gets, the, gets completed in a couple years, that's gonna be huge. Yes, and we were very fortunate that the North Central Texas Council of Governments approached us because they were looking for cities to do a study to look at first mile, last mile connections from the Silver Line. Um, and they felt like Quorum Road would be an ideal location for this in Addison. Um, it aligns with our Trails Master Plan, um, and it really helped us overcome some obstacles by doing this study. When we were planning in the Master Plan, there were some challenges that we were like, we're really gonna have to figure out how to make this successful. And so the team partnered with us, and we've gotten to this point where we actually have bike lanes on the road and cyclists are riding them today. So I feel like a lot of those obstacles are starting to get smaller and the realities um, very close. Fantastic. Now, um, are the paved trails uh, that you have here as part of your trails, uh, you know, uh, planning and all that, are they uh, part of the Parks and Rec Department as well? Yes, our trail system is part of our Parks and Rec team. And when we did our Parks Master Plan, the number one thing that we heard from our residents is they wanted more trails. Right. We feel like we have a really robust trails network, but our residents even want more. Sure. Um, one of the things that I think is really exciting is we're doing our comp plan right now, and we have a citizen-led advisory group that has written a vision statement for the comp plan. And in that, they said that they wanna be a pace setter in the region for mobility and connectivity. Right. Um, and that really gets behind what we're doing and supports our efforts. And what's really great, and one of the things that I love about uh, trails, uh, high quality multi-use trails that are well done and have that comprehensive connectivity aspect that you just mentioned there, is that they are multifunctional. They can be for recreation and sport, but they can also be for you know meaningful uh, utilitarian trips, transportation corridors too. Yes, I went to a conference one time and I think it was the CEO of Specialized Bikes. I'm gonna apologize if I got the company wrong, um, but he talked about what a difference that we could make if just that five minute trip from our home, if we would convert all of those to cycling trips. Um, the environment would be healthier, we'd have less congestion on the road, and we would be healthier. Um, and I think Addison really provide, is providing the infrastructure for people to be able to model that lifestyle. Yeah, fantastic, that's great. And uh, this particular uh, installation here uh, is the ultimate goal for this to provide a connectivity to one of those trails that you have? So this installation will connect to the Cotton Belt Trail, which is a regional trail that is going to connect from Plano all the way to Fort Worth. And it is about to start construction and it's gonna be a parallel to Silver Line Trail. And so the bike lanes will connect into that. We also are extending the bike lanes south of Beltline onto Quorum and we'll be dead ending, dead ending at the North Dallas Tollway. But we're working with the city of Dallas to partner with them to see if they can't pick up where we left off and continue their bike lane project. Um, and then the, the same thing up here on the north where we terminate, we terminate into Dallas and it's that same philosophy. We looked at their plans and we're trying to terminate in places that we can coordinate with them. Fantastic. Now this is going to be up for uh, three weeks three total. Weeks. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Uh, any final uh, words for uh, you know the audience and for your, your residents in terms of the, the pop-up here? Sure. Um, one of the things that we've heard as we were building the bike lanes and that we've been talking to everybody is the people that live in the community are so excited that this is also calming traffic a little bit. Right. Um, it's making it a more calmer, peaceful experience for people to walk through the area and they really see that it's gonna benefit their quality of life, living down here and having access to bike lanes. Yeah, and what I love about that too is, you know, we don't have to look very far, right over your shoulder over there, we see an outdoor cafe. Yes. And we can see, you know, yes, we've got the residents in this area, 
but yeah, that calmer of you know environment is is good for business and it's good for yes. quality of life for people in this area. Yes, there's definitely an economic development advantage in Texas to having bike lanes and trails close to um, where cafes and restaurants are because yeah. they become clients of those cafes and restaurants, and so it's just kind of full circle um, beneficial for everybody that's in this district. Yeah, yeah, and, and not to mention the fact the the other point you made earlier is just tra slowing down the the traffic a little bit. That traffic calming aspect makes it you know a little bit more likely that people will want to linger right. here. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you again. Thank yeah, you so thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and share it with a friend. And until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.